calling 911. There's a gentleman in the bathroom. Is the door locked or? Yes, and we don't have a key. 21 ALO 2, responding to West Washington Street. He has it, is on the way. Okay. How many EMS assist at 328 West Washington Street? And four. 103 Jefferson. You can change this one over there if you haven't already. That's enough. Oh, I wonder what's going on here. Let's go ahead and light him up. He's going out the window! Clear the room! He's got a gun. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid that's becoming more and more prevalent in the drug world. It's actually more potent than heroin or morphine, and even some of its analogs, such as carfentanyl, are much more potent than that. Fentanyl has been seen in powder, tablet, capsule, rock, nasal spray. The forms are always changing. What we've seen in the last few years with fentanyl is a rise in the number of deaths associated with its use. First responders are increasingly likely to encounter fentanyl in the line of duty. We want to make sure that they have the facts to keep them safe I got this on my hands. Well, one myth is that just touching any amount of fentanyl is likely to cause severe uh, illness or injury or even death. And, and that's just not true. Incidental skin contact with fentanyl. Hey man, what's going on? Fentanyl can be washed off with soap and water. Wash your hands. You'll be OK. Think? Yes. All right. You don't want to use hand sanitizer, because that can actually potentially increase the absorption of fentanyl. Exposure can come in many ways, through skin contact, through the mucous membranes of your mouth, through your eyes, or the most significant risk is from aerosolized airborne powder. Another myth is that PPE or personal protective equipment won't protect you from fentanyl. And the truth is that in mo most circumstances it will offer a, a significant level of protection. And gloves will protect from the skin exposure, skin contamination of your hands. The respirator mask will, will prevent the inhalation of an airborne powder. Wearing eye protection can prevent the exposure through the, through the mucous membranes of your eyes. Hey, can you check her breathing? All right. Ma'am, are you all right? Hey, can you hear me? Should someone become exposed to fentanyl, uh, some of the signs or symptoms that you would see would be drowsiness or unresponsiveness, slow or no breathing, and then constricted or pinpoint pupils. Those are the signs or symptoms you want to look for in yourself or in your partner or in someone that you're responding to. She's not breathing. Better call EMS. 960, Hotel 16. Hotel 1360. Yes, can you get EMS on the way to 301 Jasper Street, room 250? Sending EMS to 301 Jasper Street, room 250. They're on their way. If you think you've been exposed to a substance that could be fentanyl, you want to take that very seriously. You want to alert a supervisor or a buddy, tell them what you think is going on, and the first step is to prevent any further contamination. The second step is to not touch your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Uh, that way you'll prevent further exposure. Uh, third step is to simply wash the area with soap and water. And then finally, if you think your clothes or, or some of your protective materials have been exposed or contaminated, you want to remove those through your standard decontamination protocols. More and more first responders are being provided with naloxone for use in the line of duty. 
you want to administer the naloxone per your established protocols. Naloxone is a very safe medication, and it can very rapidly and effectively reverse the effects of fentanyl, and it can be life-saving. How are you feeling? Okay. Having any trouble breathing or anything? No, I did get a little on my uh, skin accidentally. I washed it off with soap and water, though, and then gloved up. Okay. I'll check your pulse real quick. Okay. The threat of fentanyl is real, but we're showing a multi-layered defense that will keep first responders safe while they do their job and keep the rest of us safe.